Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Voscoin YouTube channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the Micro BT What's Miner M20S. That's a very long way to say the one of the latest Bitcoin miners that has taken over the Bitcoin mining scene. These miners were produced in huge volume and sold in bulk, you know, bulk deals, bulk prices, and they comprise a very large portion of current generation Bitcoin mining farms. We've been touring mining farms this year. We have a video series on mining farms launching over the next couple weeks. So you will be seeing these mining farm videos and you will see in all of these farms, you will see the M20S. You will absolutely see them. These are miners that are delivered in pallets. And I bring this up and I stress this because while you may have not actually seen too many of these miners, they have not been talked about too much, you know, you know, the smaller scale, uh, smaller quantity miners, and basically just in deals where you're not dealing with like 100 plus miners, but they are very real, they are very powerful, and they are very power hungry. So today's video is gonna be all about the Micro BT What's Miner M20S, and we're going to jump into the review we're going to talk about the profitability and i'm going to go over the you know basically the pros and cons and if i think this is a good buy in the current state of bitcoin mining and also maybe some alternatives i would recommend over this miner so without further ado let's run 10 seconds of tails and then roll the intro and then we're going to review the what's miner m20s One key warning I have when you're looking for these miners is be very careful with scam websites. What's miner.net, what's miner.com, Pangolin Miner, which is actually a distributor. Uh, but then we have what's Mi micro BT, what's miner D1. And the, and the list kind of goes on. I believe this is the official site, but I've never ordered directly from them. It's also only in, uh, oh, here, here's an English version. So that's kind of nice. I mean, it's definitely better than, uh, a foreign language if you do not speak <laughs> that language but today's video is all made possible thanks to coin mining central okay so we've been dealing with them for a while now if you've been watching the channel you may have noticed well they've helped us get a lot of miners they were otherwise unacquirable and in conjunction with them we've also created a coupon code boss coin and we made that a permanent site-wide code to get three percent off on the miners so you just add it to your cart and you can go to checkout and from there you can just put in boss coin and apply that and then you will get the reduction there if you have any worries about coin mining central join our discord server some of our members have ordered from them that's been fine again i've been dealing back and forth with gavin of coin mining central for like a year now i guess and uh, also you can look at their trust pilot reviews that's not a big thing here in the US, but apparently it's a big thing over in the UK and uh, other countries. So anyways, he's got some good reviews on here and really that's that. So that is where I would recommend picking one of these up if you are looking for one. So let's check the specs, okay? So I've got the 65 terahash second model, but it's actually hatching about 70 terahash second on average. It's supposed to consume 3,360 watts, which is quite a lot, okay? This is also gonna be minor. That's it's only rated to run on 220 slash 240 volts. So please keep that in mind, you know, when you're looking to get this miner. And while a quick glance at the chart makes you think that it's averaging above 70 terahash second, F2 pool says on a 24 hour span, I average 68 and uh, 0.54 terahash a second. And that's gonna be your Bitcoin mining hash rate speed. Higher your pool side hash rate is gonna just simply be your higher rated earnings. In the last 24 hours I've mined, um, you know, 0.001302 Bitcoin. You're wondering how much that is that translates to $10. And one key thing I wanna touch on here when it comes to mining, okay? So you have mining fees with mining pools, mining fees on uh, OSs to use with miners. And one thing you really need to watch out for is is rejected hash rate because every share like percentage of your hash rate that is rejected is going to simply be a lower payout you'll get rejected shares don't earn you any money so if you're having some kind of connection issue whether it's you know you're connecting to a pool that's too far away from you or there's issues with your personal inter internet connection or you have or you're running a minor off wi-fi and that wi-fi is not very good you know this is just coming straight out of your profit so that's just something i haven't touched on too much in the past 
want to touch on it here for you guys. Currently, if you're paying 12 cents per kilowatt hour on your electric rate, this miner is supposed to earn $3 a day. Keep in mind this at the current BTC price of $7,560, basically two dollars. A lot of people think uh, Bitcoin's gonna go up here soon. Also, don't forget about the Bitcoin price having, or uh, no, not price having, maybe, block reward having coming up here, um, you know, over the next several months, which is going to cut mining rewards in half. The scary thing about mining Bitcoin is the lag between hash rate. Okay, so, you know, price went up here. We were dealing with a 12,000 Bitcoin, you know, in uh, December or excuse me, July here. Now we're in December and it has taken this long with the Bit with the Bitcoin price basically almost falling in half since then. Right. You know, down to like sixty eight hundred bucks, seven thousand dollars recently. And it's only around this point where the Bitcoin ha hash rate and difficulty finally stopped climbing. And finally, some miners turned off. Finally, some farms capitulated and it went down some only to come back up a little bit to go down to come up. And after this recent price bump, I guarantee you it's going to go up again. So uh, as far as like, you know, being bullish on miners this this is not an ideal time like this. Do we have a halving coming up? and hash rate is still sky high let's jump into the miner look at the features how to use it and then i'll round out the review uh you know just kind of with my experience and thoughts on this for you guys by the way this thing is freaking loud like so loud like this loud this is probably the most annoying miner i've had since the panda miner as you can see the panda miner runs pretty warm pretty loud this is not a miner that you want in your house don't say I didn't warn you. So yeah, that's that. Let's go ahead and log into the miner. You're gonna find the IP address, log into your router, or use an IP scanner, get the IP address, put it in your browser, hit enter. It'll come up with admin and then you need a password. The password is also admin. You'll put that in and you'll be met with this screen. It normally is pretty slow. These, these miners are pretty slow. The dash kind of sucks, but that's okay. So it still works. The elapsed time period of how, like the uptime of this miner is right here. You can see the giga hash, you can see the accepted shares, rejected shares, which is different than your pool rejection rate on the uh, you know, mining pool there. So I don't think those are the same. We can see the boards here. We got a frequency, frequency 658, 671, 674, and what the corresponding hash rates of those are. We can see, we can make sure all three of the uh, boards here are gonna be alive, what their temperature is. It's always gonna be in Celsius. We can see what mining pool we're connected to, um, you know, and all our details there, difficulty, how many get work, accepted shares, rejected, and so forth. From here is where the miner is a little bit odd uh, compared to some other miners. So let's say I'll go to configuration and then I'll go to CG miner configuration. From here is where you're going to want to set your pool up, okay? So coin type is just gonna sit there on BTC with this miner. You can grab one of the preloaded pools in here or you can load a custom pool. Um, you can mess around this with this if you want to. Just for the sake of uh, simplicity here, I just went with F2 pool. So I just clicked a pre-configured pool, but you guys know we mine on F2 pool sometimes. It's a good pool. And they have PPS, which is pay per share, which actually makes reviewing kind of easier because you get like automatically credited for your mining shares, which is always a good thing uh, just for evaluation purposes. So we're in here and all you have to do with that is just sign up with F2 pool, make a user account, username, and just put your, uh, in the worker, you would actually just put your username, right? So mine is Voscoin. And then for password, you can literally just leave that blank, click save and apply, and then you go to CG miner status, which is the page where, the page where we're previously on. And you can see that, you know, the miner is up and you can see that it's connected to the, to the pool and mining properly. As far as the other options and things you can do in this dashboard, it's basically nothing. These are just going to be logs, looking at processes, very technical things um, and, you know, technical information to decipher here. There's no built in overclocking feature, which I mean, you know, sucks. But I mean, how much can you really overclock this miner that's already pulling 14 amps? <laughs> if anything, it's something I would be considering down clocking personally. I mean, obviously that depends on you, your goals, and also your setup. Um, other than that, I mean, really just other than loading a mining pool and, a, and really a custom pool in that uh, that uh, that area, that's really gonna be all you're gonna be doing in here. So this this 
interface it's a little ugly it's a little simple it's a little sluggish and slow but it works and that's really all we could ever ask for so as far as the miner you know the uptime has been good it's been fine it's been hashing away it's been doing everything it's supposed to do it produces a ton of heat i mean i didn't use like an infrared thermometer here which would have been the better thing to do but i just grabbed the you know room thermometer i have in there and i put it in front of the exhaust fan and it quickly started to show over 100 degrees fahrenheit for the air coming out of this miner that's very hot that is you know it, it, it hurts your hand the, like it's not gonna melt but it hurts your hand to just hold it there in front of that exhaust port uh, you know so obviously that depends on the ambient room temperature and also the chip temp and what it's blowing out and all that stuff but the point is that this thing moves air and it moves very hot air if the miner is hot which it normally is because it's consuming 14 amps of power okay so that's like over 3,000 watts on this setup even on 240 volt which is slightly more efficient than 120 volt this miner is doing everything that it's supposed to do it is profitable and it has been very profitable for other people depending on the price they paid for and when they got it in 2019 in 2020 this miner is still going to be a viable option okay the, the s17s the t17s the m20s's they're gonna have some de they're definitely gonna have some longevity okay the s9 is basically obsolete hardware Whereas these miners are built on the next, you know, uh, the next chip architecture. They're updated. They're bigger. They're bulkier. They're much more farm-based. Okay, you see a lot. All these units like it has a built-in power supply. Okay, so I just plug this thing in. I plug Ethernet. I log in. I put it to my pool, and that's it. These things are designed for big deployments. And you only have to connect a power supply to it. It's already in there. Issues with that is when that power supply potentially goes bad. Well. You know, now you got more work to do to go ahead and disassemble that, put a different power supply on there, getting one that works properly or kind of rigging it up so you have one that was not initially made for it but is still capable of doing so. Keep in mind, you're dealing with a unit that needs a big power supply. Got to have a, you know, the capabilities to do that. This is an issue that some people run on run into with the S17s. The most common issue with the Antminer S17 is the power supply failing. What happens when the power supply fails? The miner fails. So just some stuff to keep in mind. If you don't have uptime, you don't have profitability. That's simple. Would I recommend the What's Miner M20S at 1,700 pounds, which translates to 2,200 USD? I mean, I would not recommend it. Like it's not a, it's not a bad miner. It does what it's supposed to do, and you know that's fine. But personally, if you're looking to spend, you know, that kind of money. I'd be looking more at like an Antminer S17e, which we actually have into review, so stay tuned to the Voscoin YouTube channel. Is uh, you know with this miner, you have a pretty significant reduction in price, right? So 1,700 pounds versus 1,400 pounds, which if you want to know that USD conversion, that'd be $1,800. So for you know minus maybe at the most 10 terahash a second, technically you know five or eight for you know reducing your break even by that you need to reach by 300 pounds which was like four hundred dollars here see that because this is the original and then this is the updated one thanks google uh you know i'd be looking more like that unit otherwise if you want to get the latest and greatest like for density there's s17 plus pushing 73 terahash a second and it's 1799 pounds for 1699 pounds I would spring for that. Keep in mind, one thing a lot of people overlook is the simple fact that ant miners are going to always have so much more resellability. People still look for and search for ant miner S9s and so forth. I'm not, I know I just said they're out of date. That doesn't mean people still don't look for them and consider them just because they know about them, they heard about them. There's so much information on them out there. Okay, but what about things like the How Long Mining Dragon Mint Miner, right? If you guys remember that one. So that miner, you know. That was a fine miner, okay? But it didn't have that that branding. The company came and the company left. That's maybe the case with What's Miner here. Did you know about What's Miner a couple years ago? No, you probably didn't. Did you know about What's Miner in a couple years? Maybe. They may get bigger or they may fall off. That's kind of the thing with these China, you know, these China ops. So at the end of the day, guys, this miner is a fine miner. And if you're looking to mine Bitcoin, it's really just gonna come down to getting the best miners you can at the best prices. 
if you want to try this one out, it's fine. It works good. Uh, again, I don't really recommend it, but I don't really recommend against it. And, and keep in mind, it's definitely for lower electric rates and farm deployments. These are things that maybe you could get in bulk and like get some savings. But if you're looking to just get a couple of miners to try out, I'd be looking more towards like the Ant Miner S17 Plus or the S17E and maybe even the T17E and, and whatever. We're gonna have some videos on that coming soon. Uh, but again, if you are attracted to the M20S, go ahead and grab it. It's fine, it works, and it's really loud. <laughs> Am I talking with my hands too much today? <laughs> I don't know. But thanks guys for watching, I appreciate it. You guys make it what everything I do worthwhile and fun and just, uh, well, kind of give me a purpose with the channel. Chasing 100,000 subscribers soon, so please hit the thumbs up, leave a comment below, and subscribe to help us reach our goal there. As always, I appreciate you. I'll see you on the next one. I'll be home.